Hey guys, welcome back to Punk Rock Radar. We're on filling in to do this lively intro for our video today because Matt Barrett doesn't have electricity like he's some Amish person living in the 1800s. In reality, we're going to be taking a look at that band that loves to stare at itself in the mirror, face to face. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. We are here, Sans Matt. He had a last minute uh, disconnection, which is appropriate for face to face, but we are fine. Uh, if it's your first ranking video with us, what we're going to do is talk about each album chronologically and rank them S through D, S being the best, D being the worst. And for face to face today, we're going to do a maximum of one in the S tier. So just one single album up there and then a minimum of two in every other tier so there's going to be some in c and some in d uh lewis how you doing today you got uh your shoes and matt's shoes to fill today how you feeling well uh you know it's going to be a ch it's going to be uh, a challenge i only have two feet so i don't know how to make that work but no, it'll be good i have electricity and it's hot out so i'm very thankful for my air conditioning so i'm having a better evening than matt is for sure man yeah, it's like 100 degrees, so he's he's sweating it out in his garage right now. We tried to make it work, uh, but we're just we're just going to do it as a duo. You know, it's not Let's the first it. time, but we'll get through it. Uh, but, Lewis, I'm going to let you lead us off. Album number one, 1992's Don't Turn Away. What are you doing with this one? All right. Yeah. So for uh, Don't Turn Away, uh, I don't know what to say about this album outside of everything that's been said before. It's definitely like a seminal punk rock release. I think of the early 90s. It was like a little bit of ahead of its time as a debut album, especially looking at this track list, like everybody knows Disconnected and it just keeps going with all like the other good songs. I mean, I, I mean, John, is there a song I hear that you could think you don't really like? I mean, going all the way down to don't turn away and and you've done nothing because one two one two three four i can't do it so i'm just gonna we had to do it at least once uh but yeah this is a really good album as a youth this was by far my favorite face to face record um and you know it's i definitely softened that view with that in mind i'm putting that in the a category nice all right yeah i'm kind of with you like like we said it's 1992 it's a debut album like what more can you ask for from a band some classic songs on there, but I'm going to go B. There's a couple I like better, but I definitely think it's a hell of a start for Face to Face. It's like one of the best debut punk albums ever, I think. Uh, still one that I listen to a fair bit. And Lewis, I, I, honestly, I don't know where you're going to put this next one, but I can't say the same uh, for Big Choice from 1995. But I don't know you anything. It's just an album I've personally never really connected with. I think like taking a look at the tracks, like Debt is obviously a good song on here. And then you've got um, Late is one of my favorites. You got the re-recording of Disconnected, which even the band isn't crazy about. But I'm going to put Big Choice in the C tier. What about you? Uh, I, I'm a little bit more favorable to this one. Um, I, I think they're really, I mean, I think we're probably on the same wavelength though, because I'm going to put this in at B. Um, I don't think you can really rank these two albums with heart too much. They're pretty close. Uh, this marks what, was this their uh, their major label debut, right? Oh, by the way, like we have to talk about Face to Face being like label jumpers, right? So <laughs> they're on Do Doctor Strange Records, right? Then they get signed to Fat Rec, who re-releases their debut record, right? And then they go to the A and M, and they put out Big Choice, and they re-record a song that was re-recorded or re-released by Fat Rec. So they have an interesting trajectory. But I, I think it's a stronger record, probably than than you rank it. Um, but I also lack that connection with it. So disconnected from Big Choice, <laughs> but a solid a solid B in my opinion. Uh, definitely a listenable record. Yeah, I, I was expecting to put it in A. Like I, I know it's like one of the fan favorite albums, but. For me, like of the first three, it's the weakest of them. And I think the strongest one is the next one we're going to do, uh, the face-to-face -face self titled uh, from 1996. And I've told this story probably 10 times in this channel already. This is probably the first time it's actually relevant. But uh, 
<laughs> but uh, I heard face to face on this album here, uh, Vagrant Five Years on the Street. It's got uh, I'm Trying and Resignation on it. And I like those songs so much that I went out and I wanted to get the most bang for my buck. So I bought the live album, not knowing what a live album was. And my favorite parts of that live album are Resignation, Walk the Walk, Blind, Ordinary, I Won't Lie Down. I think like half the songs from this album are on the live record. Uh, but I mean, it goes without saying, I went and I picked this one up shortly after. It's still one of my favorite albums of all time. I think it's a near flawless punk rock album. So this is my one and only S tier. It's my favorite face-to-face -face album. I'm putting the self-titled in S. Lewis, what about you? I'm right there with you. So uh, in my opinion, this is by far the best face-to-face -face record for all the reasons uh, you called out. I mean, the songwriting is just totally crisp and just infectious hooks and the lyrics and everything really connects here uh, for the band. I, we got to stop using connect because it's just getting hilarious <laughs> at this point. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this was an album. I, you know, honestly, like I'm really listening to it again. Like I probably haven't listened to this record in a few years, just, you know, not outside of like a few songs here and there. And just listening to this, I'm like amazed. This wasn't like a crossover, like breakout record, you know, like, it just feels like it could have been um, and like the band could have been on a different trajectory. It's that good um, for sure. A sure S uh, and uh, we'll, we'll cover Matt's picks at the end, by the way, but a definite S for me. All right. So we're, we're pretty similar so far. And if I, unless you got a huge surprise, Lewis, uh, I think we're going to stay pretty similar, but I'm going to let you take us into ignorance is bliss from 1999. What are you doing with this bad boy? All right, so I'm going to file this one under D for dump. Uh, no, <laughs> a little harsh. Uh, this is by far my least, I don't know, maybe not anymore, but it is by far one of my least favorite face-to-face uh, -face records. Um, it definitely shows the band was trying to go with a different style, a little bit more, you know, rock influence, kind of expanded, albums a lot slower. But, I mean, it just didn't do anything for me. It... it it felt like a ballad album to nobody. Yeah. I don't know. That's the way I kind of felt about it. I think we all had that same impression. And I think I, I think I had gotten this one probably off streaming services back in the day. And by streaming services, I mean Napster or whatever. And I was just like, this can't be this album. You know what I mean? It was like so disappointing, especially after self-titled. So that's how I feel about it. I'm not even going to quote any record, uh, any other album names because they suck. <laughs> but <laughs> It's a, it's a hard D for me here. Yeah, it's a D for me too. Like, I think this has got to be one of the worst albums by a band I like in, like, in history, which is saying something. I, I feel like the album title like, is in reference to how you feel before you heard this album. <laughs> because that's, oh, that's a good, that's that's a good the way joke. I, I wish that it was. But uh, I think the only good song on here is Questions Still Remain, and it's a bonus track from an EP that came out shortly after. And in case you guys don't know, it's never a good sign when the best song is a bonus track. But that that is literally the only good song in here. This is an easy D for me. If this album was in my cat's litter box, I would throw the litter box away. It stinks so bad. So, uh, yeah, that's an easy one for me. But, Lewis, I'll let you take us into uh, the redemption arc here because I know you're a big fan of the next one, Reactionary. Yeah. What are you doing with this yeah. one? Yeah. I know we've never quite seen eye to eye of this one. And we did cover this on a, on a, one of our other shows that we do, but uh, reactionary. Um, let me say, I don't rank it as S, but it's probably my favorite face to face record. And that has a lot to do with uh, nostalgia. And I remember buying this record and, you know, you didn't have a ton of records. Mm. If you, when you were younger, you didn't have streaming services. So you put a record in, you forced yourself to like it. And I guess I forced myself to like this one. But I still like it to this day. I mean, all the way from disappointed on all the way down. I mean, the bonus tracks, I don't think I heard back then. But regardless, like, I like almost every song, uh, everything on here. You could have had everything. Like, it's definitely a positive move from Ignorance is Bliss. 
It still has a little, little bit of experimentation. And I think I noted this before, Icons, uh, which I think is probably my favorite track on the album, was used in Dave Mira's Freestyle BMX. So that also has that going for it. So I'm putting this one in A. Nice. Yeah. And Lewis, you and I, you like you said, we we don't see eye to eye sometimes. I think like on Metropole was one, maybe the Heavens LP, but uh, you were 100% right on this one. I should have listened to you way before. Uh, but like ignorance is bliss is like kind of like finding a hair in your food at a restaurant. You don't want to go right back. You want to give them time to get their shit together. So, but I shouldn't have waited 20 years to listen to this because it, it, it sounds like the successor to the self-titled. And I, I really enjoyed it this past week. Uh, I'm going to put it in B. Um, for some reason, I always just assumed it was very similar to ignorance is bliss, but it's definitely not. If you guys have passed this over all the years like I did, definitely go back, give it another listen, because it, it's definitely a solid album. And um, let's, go, let's go straight into the next one here, How to Ruin Everything, which, by the way, uh, this was Matt's S, right? I, I, I don't know if we're going to reveal his whole list at the end or... Oh, well, we'll cover it, but we'll give away the spoiler here. Yeah, so this is Matt's S. was matt's s this when we started the list like we were originally gonna have two s's this was gonna be my second s uh if i did one i'm not sure that would have held up there was another album that really kind of surged uh towards the end for me but just taking a look at the track list bill of goods takeaway uh wolf and sheep's clothing then for me there's shoot the moon and at track nine, but around that it's kind of like some fluff, a little bit of filler here and there. So that's what kind of knocked this one down slightly for me uh, over the last couple of days. But I'm still going to put how to ruin everything in my A tier. Uh, Lewis, what about you? Um, well, my A's are kind of getting taken up, so I'm going to give this one a B, but I, I want to express how much I do like this record. So I think Bill of Goods is probably their best album starter. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it just like really kicks the shit out of you at the first track. It's good. And then uh, The World in Front of You, I think, is probably overall one of their most single worthy sounding songs. It's a really good song. And and like you said, uh, I think this one gets a little bit lower than A for me because I I don't know, maybe I'm misremembering, but I did list, just listen to it. But I feel like the second half is a, a lot weaker than the yeah. first half. But so it takes a pretty big dive for me. And we were kind of talking about this offline, how like the nice thing about face to face is like you'll be like, listening to it it's kind of all sounding the same and then they have like this secret banger track hidden somewhere at the end and i don't think i really found it on this one so i really like this record but i'm putting it in b yeah that's more than fair so lewis i want your opinion first on uh this one after the long hiatus we get laugh now laugh later in 2011 nine years later what are you doing with this one what do you think of it Um, yeah, so it's not a D, it's not a B, so it's got to be a C. Uh, I think, uh, I think it's, I think this is like the epitome of an average record. Um, it's pretty forgettable. Um, I mean, I think I listened to it and then the next day I asked myself, oh, did I listen to that one yet to review for the show to get, to get up to date on this? Like this album just like, you know, it just kind of seems like going through the motions, which is pretty surprising after such a long hiatus, you know, you think it would be a lot more innovative or different and it just felt like just mediocre face-to-face -face songs so um i went to go see face to face in their first reunion tour i was really bummed i saw them when they were touring for that and when this was coming out i was excited and just really disappointed so giving it a c for disappointment i didn't laugh then and i'm not laughing now <laughs> yeah I i'm with you i feel like the first two songs are great and then you've got all or nothing towards the middle which is another good song but after nine years of waiting the fans just deserved more than an EP's worth of good songs, but I'm with you. I'm also putting in C. It has some songs I really like, but it's definitely not going to sniff the B tier at all. And the same can be said uh, once we get here uh, to 2013's Three Chords and a Half Truth, or as I like to call it, Three Ambient and a Benadryl, uh, because it really puts me to sleep. This, Lewis, I don't know how you feel about this one, but this is a complete snooze fest for me i think the only good song in here is right as rain and that it might be a social distortion cover i'm still not sure but this is my other d tier album uh what are you doing with this one 
D2. Um, I don't have the same impression of it as you. Uh, I don't think it's as boring as the previous record. I just like it way less than the previous record. Like, I, I, I remember putting on one, two, three, drop, and I was like, what the f- I know I don't want to curse too much, but like, what the fuck am I listening to? I think you made the observation that it sounded like they were trying to cover, a, a, like, trying to make a social distortion record, and yes. I think that's pretty right on the money. Yeah, it's a, it's a really disappointing record, and I would have assumed that this would have been like the death knell for the band mm-hmm. until we talk about the next one. Yeah, and what's weird, the only thing this album had going for was the album art. And then look what they did on Spotify. Like that that yeah. is I mean, I can barely even read it. It hurts my eyes. Like it's like a now and later candy. We you can't tr- you can't trick us, guys. We know this isn't a fun album. But <laughs> I I don't know uh what that's about. Yeah, but the one we have here, like that's cool. But they even cool. botched that on uh, streaming services. But yeah, Lewis, you touched on it. So why don't yeah. you take us into protection, the one after this from 2016. Remember where we used to have it, it never seemed like we- Yeah, so protection is by far the best face-to-face record since How to Ruin Everything, in my opinion, including the one we're going to talk to after this to give away you know, a little bit of future here. But I think this is a really strong record. Um, no, I wouldn't put it in my top tier. It's going into the it's going into the B, but uh, it's one that I didn't give a lot of love to when it first came out, just because I think I had such a sour taste in my mouth over the last two records. But listening to it again, I was like, yeah, this is pretty good. Bet not broken is is pretty awesome. I mean, it, double cross. Like, I mean, there's a lot of good songs on this record, and uh, yeah, it just kept me wanting to go back to it. And I'm definitely going to be listening to it again because it's the one I'm probably one I'm least less familiar with than the other ones. Yeah, this this is my other A tier album. Uh, like you said, Bent But Not Broken, Double Cross. Then on the back half, 1459, Keep Your Chin Up, and So It Goes. This has the most good songs of any face-to-face album since How to Ruin Everything uh, by far. The only thing that bugs me about this is track two. I won't say I'm sorry. That is such a bad track two when it's sandwiched in between Bent But Not Broken and Double Cross completely deflates the album. I don't know what they were thinking. That has track 12 written all over it. Uh, should not be there. But yeah, this is my other A-tier album, Protection. And I'll take us into the, the last one here. Uh, we've got No Way Out But Through. And this one, this one's tough, man. This is, it's pretty similar to Protection, but I feel like they added on like a lot of fluff here. Like the songwriting is great. Like I'm singing a lot, I'm singing along to a lot of these songs, but they just seem to drone on a little bit. Like they're four minutes, 3.30, and you should never have more minutes than chords in a face-to-face song. That should be a rule if it's not already. But uh, this one's good enough for me to put in the B tier. If they shaved a minute off every song, I could easily slide it into A. But I'm going B on this one, Lewis. What do you think? Um, I'm, I'm with you with the downgrade, but I'm going to have to put it into C just because of the way mine are shaking out. I think it's a pretty good record. Um, I'm obviously le- least familiar with this one because it's relatively new. Um, but yeah, I didn't really find anything that was jumping out of me as much better than protection. I agree. The songs are overly long. Um, the, uh, I don't like the cover, Yeah, <laughs> but, but I mean, it's at least a positive thing to see that the band is kind of sticking with that formula that they started uh, back again with protection and kind of like finding their sound again. And I mean, I, I, you know, we kind of been having a little fun here with face to face. Like I gotta tell you, like, I think Trevor Keith is like, like one of the best punk singers of all time. Like, and then, you know, they write some of the catchiest riffs. So it just makes, you know, the reason I want to be so <laughs> hating on so many of these albums is <laughs> like, you just know what potential they have, right? Like when you, when you like hear these shit albums and you're just like, what were you thinking, man? Like you're so much better than this. So yeah, it's a C and, but a positive C, you know, I would give it a C plus if I could. Yeah. And I'm with you too. Like, you know, we like to have fun with this. I like to get my jabs in here and there, but I'm a huge face to face fan. Like I guarantee you 
Uh, I've listened to all these albums tons and tons of times with the, with the exception of the bottom. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't ever want to listen yeah. to those again, but uh, I, I'm a huge fan, even though I get my jabs in here and there. Uh, but Lewis, one thing I do want to say, face to face needs to step up their album art game. Like, just look at this. This is an, an ugly slide we've got here for once. Like, I... <laughs> How to Ruin Everything's the best one. How right? to Ruin Everything is the best one. Other than that, like these are these are terrible album arts. The Actionary's okay. It feels like a late '90s cover. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to read. I can't really even tell. I mean, maybe because it's so small, but it's hard yeah. to really see what's going on in there. Yeah. No, their their album game sucks, yeah. and the album art game like. Laugh now, laugh later. I mean, I hate that one too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like somebody did half the job and Trevor Keith was like, I don't have the rest of the cash for you. It, it's funny you say that because I bought the vinyl uh, when it came out and this is like a tattoo artist who did it. And yeah, yeah. it came with all like this, the prints that the guy did, all, all this stuff from this. Like, I mean, I don't mind that one. It's like a standard, you know, hole in the wall tattoo shop album cover, but... I don't know what anybody did with those prints. I know I didn't keep them, but uh, yeah. but that's it. I mean, do you want to do you want to reveal Matt's list? I heard him uh, right. on the phone with you. There's definitely some questionable stuff there. Yeah, I'll do. I'll go through Matt's list. So um, we don't have a bracket for him, but we'll just kind of talk through it. So in Matt's S tier, he had how to ruin everything, which we kind of already hinted at. So or said blatantly. Uh, he, I always know that he had a really strong affection for that album. So. Not really surprising. Going into Matt's A tier, uh, Matt, big fan of protection. So, uh, you know, Matt Barrett always uses protection. That is his <laughs> policy. So we're putting him in there. Uh, me and him agreeing on Don't Turn Away, also coming into the A tier. So a little love of the classic face-to-face. -face. Going into the B, the shocker for me, and I think for John too, is self-titled. Uh, going into that category. And I think the Matt, the reason Matt said is because he doesn't like staring at that guy's chest. So, <laughs> uh, you know, so choose your album art better. Matt would like it a little bit more. Uh, and then big choice coming in at B. So kind of following our trend of, of one lower. All right. Coming in at C, uh, a little bit different than all of us here. I think, well, not really, actually. He has a uh, reactionary in C. So I think is the lowest of all of ours here. Uh, he has Laugh Now, Laugh Later, which we've kind of all... That is the one confirmed C, I think, all yeah, of it, right? Yeah, so, it and he has No Way Out But Through. So that one made it to C for me, but not for you. So the confirmed C is Laugh Now, Laugh Later. Now, oh, and then we have confirmed Ds all around. You got to love when a plan comes together. You have Ignorance is Bliss and Three Chords coming in go. in the D category for Matt. So... It's not often we you see us agree on the S tier, but to pick two albums that are so different and are twenty years apart and we're, they're hated by three people so much <laughs> that they all get D. That should be your kryptonite. And I know there's probably someone out there that Ignorance Is Bliss is their favorite album, and I think that's funny. But yeah, these are. I, I really be, hope that's right? not true. No, there's no there's way. Gotta be. That's got to be there's like some be. Amish kid, and it's all his only tape he has. The only thing he's ever heard is like. That and like some like Billy Joel uh, hand me down, and then he should pick uh, Billy Joel. So I don't. There's no excuse. My brother Ezekiel gave me this Walkman. <laughs> I've been listening to Ignorance Is Bliss since 19 or whatever it came out, 99. Oh my god! Oh man! So that's Matt's list. Uh, he's Amish right now, so that's why he couldn't share it with you. But <laughs> really, really not too surprising. Um, and I agree with a lot of match choices here besides self-titled. So I could see putting reactionary lower if, if it's not your bag, not your tea, not your, you know, cup of tea, but self-titled and B. I don't know. No man. way. That, gotta, yeah, that's gotta crazy. be, gotta be an A. Yeah. Gotta be an A at least. That would be. Yeah. But I like Matt showing love to the classics too. It's yeah. got don't turn away an A and how to ruin everything is a solid S. It, I don't know, man. I think. I think protection might be my one A now. I don't know. Like I can go back and forth with those two. Like they're pretty similar sounding records. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm good with my list. Was there any one that gave you any trouble? Any ones you struggled with? Yeah, I mean, you know, I really wanted to put reactionary in S to be honest. I thought you I were really, going to. Yeah, I I, I love it. It is, but like I said, it's my favorite face to face record. But 
I think from an objective perspective, like I don't think I could call it their best record, right? So, um, and I think, you know, I was kind of hesitant to front load the A's a little bit with three A's. If if I was to redo it and and put three in A's, I probably would have put either protection or how to ruin everything in there. That those would be the two jockeying for my other A spot, I believe. Yeah. See, for me, it's those those A's are pretty clearly above the B. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm going with this list. I, I went back and forth. I struggled. I did not want to put big choice in C because I've listened to it a long time. But uh, reactionary just did it for me, man. You were right. I was I was jamming all those songs. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, that that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know uh, what your favorite face to face album is. If if you are a lover of three chords and a half truth or ignorance and is bliss, we'd love to hear. Uh, about if that's true and why it's true and uh what's the matter with you if you want to put that down there too i'm just kidding but uh yeah we're gonna wrap up here lewis anything else you want to say before we say goodbye oh man just get out there and uh go by reactionary <laughs> that's that's my advice for today is go listen to reactionary it's a really yes. good record go have a reactionary take and listen to reactionary uh, that's going to do it for us guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure and leave a thumbs up and, uh, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I forget to say it every time, but you know about it. Please do it. And we'll see you next time.